In today's video, we will discuss about the summary of the book The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Successful investing does not require stratospheric IQ, expert information or fortune for that matter. Instead, what's needed is a sound intellectual framework for making decisions integrated with a capacity to keep emotions from spoiling it. In the book, The Intelligent Investor, Benjamin Graham offers such a structure and reasoning that will help keep your emotion under control. Probably, his investing method has been one of the most effective ones during the last century. The excellent records not simply of Graham himself but additionally of countless of his disciples are impossible to ignore. The brightest shining star is Warren Buffett, the third richest person worldwide at this video making time is one of them. Warren Buffett describes this book as by far the most practical book on investing ever composed. In this video, I will provide in my viewpoint the most prominent takeaways from the book. Before starting this video, let me tell you to subscribe to this channel to get many exciting videos. Takeaway number 1 Meet Mr. Market Think of that you own a part of a company that you paid $1,000 for. Every day a particular bipolar person called Mr. Market involves your house with a viewpoint regarding just how much you become part of that business is worth. Moreover, he offers to invest in your share or sell you an extra one on that particular basis. History has proven that Mr. Market's viewpoint regarding just how much your part of this business is worth can be pure gibberish. For intense, back in March 2000, he estimated your shares value to be $2,600. Only one year later, in March 2001, he assumed it deserved $500. Even though the firm's earning increased by 50% and the profit raised by 20% throughout the same period. Should you let this guy determine just how much your $1,000 of interest in that business is worth? Naturally not. One of Graham's core principles is that a stock is not simply a ticket symbol combined with a price. It's an ownership interest in a company as well as because Mr. Market is not always rational, the underlying worth of business can vary from the rate he is willing to spend for it. It regularly is over or underpriced as Mr. Market quickly becomes over optimistic or on the other hand too pessimistic. Graham suggests you invest just if you feel relaxed to hold the stock in the future without seeing the fluctuating rates that Mr. Market provides you with. However, for the investor who can maintain his hate cool, Mr. Market offers an excellent opportunity of generating income. For he does not push you to strike a deal with him. He merely provides you with a chance of doing so. It would help if you were happy to sell to him when he offers high price. As well as, likewise, you must be glad to buy from him when he provides you with bargains. We must think about it. When Graham wrote this book, people were far less bombarded with news, forecast, stock quotes and more than we are today. Back in 1970s, Mr. Market arrived perhaps daily together with with the early morning newspaper. Today we want to associate with us whenever we open our phones, which if you were anything like me is more than 100 times each day. Even if Mr. Market sees you more often, it doesn't mean that you should trade with him any more regularly than people had to in the 1970s. If he doesn't exist you with an offer that satisfied your standards, overlook him and also carry on with your day. Takeaway number 2. How to invest as a defensive investor. According to Graham, there are two kinds of investor, the defensive or passive one and the enterprising or active one. The majority of people are a better fit for the defensive approach as the moment they want to commit to investing is restricted. The defensive capitalist must produce a portfolio with a mixture of bonds and stocks, stage 50% stocks and 50% bonds. Note that how much you need to dedicate per asset category is based on your life scenario and the existing difference in the average yield of stocks versus bonds. Recover this appropriation once or twice each year so that if stocks suddenly make up 60% of the profile compared to just 40% in bonds. 
sell stocks as well as purchase bonds until 50-50 is recovered. Invest a fixed quantity of capital at regular periods. For example, directly after you get your income, it's called dollar cost averaging and will enable a fair ordinary price of stocks and bonds. Most of all, it will guarantee that you don't focus your buying at the wrong time. For the stock component of the profile, the defensive investor should aim for the following eight. Number one, diversification in the companies he invests in. 10 to 30 business need to suffice. Additionally, ensure that you are not overexposed to a single industry. Number two, the firm should be large, which Graham specified as producing greater than $100 million in yearly sales. After inflation, this equals about to $700 million in today's worth. Number three, seek companies that are conservatively financed. Such a firm has a so-called current ratio of a minimum of 200%. It implies that its current assets go to the very least two times as large as its current liabilities. Number 4. Dividend must have been paid to shareholders for at minimum the last two decades. Number 5. No earning deficits in the last 10 years. Number 6. At minimum 33% development in incomes throughout the last 10 years. It translates to a conservative growth of 2.9% yearly. Number 7. Don't overpay for assets. The price of the stock must not be higher than 1.5 times its net asset worth. The net asset value can be calculated by subtracting the company's liabilities from its assets. Number 8. Don't overpay for earnings. Don't let the P-E ratio be greater than 15 when making use of the last 12-month income. An alternative today is to spend for an index fund, which will suddenly have returns similar to the marketplace average. If you are satisfied with an average benefit via your investing, you require this to initial takeaways. However, if you crave a lot more, you will additionally require to consider takeaway number 3, how to invest as an enterprising investor. As it's so very easy for the defensive capitalist to gain the average return of the marketplace. It would seem a simple matter to beat the market. You devote a bit more time to investing than this average capitalist do, right? To be an enterprising capitalist and to defeat the marketplace is far more requiring than the logic recommends. It calls for patience, discipline, and eagerness to learn and a great deal of time. Several experts and also private financiers alike are not fit for it. It simply are to fall victim to the price quotes of Mr. Market than one might potentially imagine. Listen to this two declaration from the early 2000s at the peak of the dot-com bubble made by the chief investment planner at two large mutual funds. It's a new world order. We see people dispose of all the ideal companies with all the right people with all ideal versions since their stock price is too high. That's the worst mistake a capitalist can make. Is the stock market riskier today than two years ago just because the rates are higher? The response is no. But the answer is of course yes, yes. Of course, both declarations became expensive for the investors who put their money in these funds. Considering that firms' profits are limited, the smart financier's rate needs to want to pay for those companies also need to be limited. Rate is genuinely a vital aspect for the resourceful financiers. Much like the market tends to miscalculate business when it has been expanding fast or is glamorous for a few other reasons, it tends to undervalue those with unsatisfactory growth. As a result, the intelligent capitalist must avoid supposed growth stocks as high as possible. Why? Merely because the investment decision is based relatively extra on future incomes and also future earnings are less reputable than existing valuations. On the other hand, if you can discover a business that is valued less than its net capital, you essentially pay nothing for all the fixed assets such as 
structures, machinery goodwill and so on. The net worthing capital can be determined by subtracting overall liabilities from the current assets. Such firms were verified really lucrative during Graham's investment career. Unfortunately, they are unusual today except during challenging bear markets. Luckily, Graham suggests a different approach to discover investment for the enterprising capitalist. These requirements are similar to the ones that the defensive capitalist need to use. However, the restrictions are looser, allowing for the resourceful financiers to think about more firms. Keep in mind that there is no constraint in all relating to the business dimension. Likewise, some diversity needs to be used, but the variety of firms held isn't carved in rock for the active financier. In evaluating a company, the resourceful financier should also research its yearly monetary records. Graham has composed a whole book on this subject called The Interpretation of Financial Statements. So, we need to talk more regarding this on an additional event. Takeaway number 4. Insist on a margin of safety. There is one risk that no careful consideration can remove. The risk of being wrong. You can, however, reduce this risk. To do this, you must insist that every investment you make has a margin of safety and security. As mentioned before, the cost and worth of a company are not constantly the very same. When the rate goes to almost two-thirds of its calculated value, the capitalist has found a firm with sufficient safety and security margin. You would not construct a ship that sinks. If 31 Vikings boarded it, if you understand that, it repeatedly will be used to transport 30 of them. Neither need to purchase a stock that you believe deserves. Claim $31 if it presently is valued at $30. It might be that your calculation is wrong. In the first case, a group of angry and wage vikings might hunt you down. In the second, you could postpone your financial flexibility by several years. I don't understand which scenario I could consider worse. Use margins of safety and security. A formula used in this book can provide you some direction regarding what the worth of a business is and that reason likewise if it can be purchased with a margin of safety. Value equal to average current earnings into 8.5 plus 2 into expected annual growth rate. The growth rate needs to be equal to the expected yearly growth rate of earnings for the following 7 to 10 years. Here is just how much the three biggest firms of the S&P 500 are worth according to the formula in September 2018. Note that we can utilize the formula in reverse also to trace how much these firms have to expand in the coming 7 to 10 years for today's stock rates to be rational. There is a big discrepancy right here. According to its stock price, Amazon.com is expected to expand at 74% each year. At the same time, Apple is expected to grow at a plain 5.8%. Do you assume that this is reasonable? Takeaway number 5. Risk and reward are not always correlated. According to academic theory, the return rate that an investor can expect needs to be proportional to the level of risk that he is willing to accept. Risk is then determined as the volatility of the investment returns, meaning just how much it has differed historically from its expected value. Graham disagrees with this declaration. Instead, he argues that the rate and also worth of assets frequently are disconnected. Therefore, the return that a financier can expect is a function of how much effort and time he generates in his research of discovering bargain assets. The minimum return goes to the defensive or passive capitalist, while the maximum most likely to the resourceful capitalist who works out maximum intelligence and ability. Consider this, it's 4 a.m. in the morning and also you have been out drinking in the streets of Moscow along with your friends. You decide that it's prematurely to call it an evening and as a result you wind up in the more obscure parts of the community. At a particular Particularly unclear bar, you are approached by a man who asked, Do you want to play a game? 
Well, obviously, games are enjoyable. Your bravest, least sober friend replies. The man puts a revolving before you, which is packed with a single bullet. I will give you ten thousand dollars if you dare to take a shot, Russian roulette. Your drunk friend reach out for the weapon, but you quit him. I believe we will hand down this. You nicely inform the man. I believed so. He responds. What regarding one hundred dollars for taking two shots? This story represents the academic means of requiring a greater prospective reward for taking a greater risk. You were to receive ten thousand dollars at a sixteen point seven percent risk of blowing your minds out in the first deal. In the second deal, the bonus is one hundred thousand dollars because the risk of placing a hole through your head has risen to thirty three point three percent. It seems reasonable. right yet stock market investing doesn't have to resemble that bear in mind that price and worth are not the same when you purchase a firm at 60 cents on the dollar you have an excellent possible benefit as well as low risk furthermore if you can find an additional business that you can buy at 40 cents on the dollar you have found a much better possible reward combined with lower risk Exactly how could any people in their right mind argue that it's riskier to buy a dollar at the cost of 40 cents than to acquire a dollar at 60 cents even if the potential incentive is higher quick recap of the five takeaways Firstly, the market tends to be over optimistic and as well as pessimistic periodically. Do not let this influence what you believe the true worth of your assets are. Instead, see it as a business possibility where you reach to take care of a person who has no idea of what he is doing. Secondly, the defensive financier must choose a varied portfolio of stocks and bonds where the stock category contains inexpensive mainly problems. Thirdly, the resourceful capitalist needs to likewise go for stocks that reveals lower rate tendencies. If he can locate a trading company listed below its net capital, he could have discovered his El Dorado. The fourth takeaway is that the intelligent financier needs to demand a margin of safety when acquiring an asset. And lastly, takeaway number 5 is that risk and reward are not necessarily associated. What do you think of Graham's guidance? Are they still as applicable today as they were back in the 1970s? If you discover that any of this book's takeaways are particularly exciting and want me to specify on it, write in the comment box. If it makes sense to you, then like and share. And if you are new here, then subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching.